What's up, you carousing cowboys? It's Chris with Tabletops and Tentacles, and this is Die Alone, a tabletop role-playing game and board game podcast. This week on Die Alone, we're taking a look at a couple of Western-themed cowboy games. So let's get into it. Welcome back to Die Alone. First up, a little state of the dungeon. Not much going on here at Deeply Dapper Headquarters, apart from constant folding of paper as I finalize the last of the pamphlet adventures and everything that I've printed for Attack from Space. took me a little longer than I had expected, and a couple of real nasty paper cuts set me back, frankly. I used to do a lot of paper craft adjacent items with our Etsy shop, like I did uh, the envelopes that you'd put in the front of library books with customized things for like wedding invites and that kind of thing and so I'm no stranger to the assembly line process of folding paper over and over again but it's been a while and clearly I'm a little out of practice because it it's been kicking my butt this last week (laughs) basically all I've done is package things, prep for things, and fold paper over and over again, and fight with the old inkjet printer that I am that I picked up to increase the verisimilitude of this game, and that's worked out both good and bad. Uh, so that's been my main project. I'm also working on a few other projects, of course, because I always have 7,000 things going, but nothing live currently. I'm still looking forward to diving into Crime Fighting Luchador's uh, new book, doing the formatting and graphic design for that. I'm talking to Lester Burton about doing Grok 2E's graphic design and some art for that, which I'm excited about. And I just finished up some art for Alan Barr on his Siege Perilous game that finished kickstarting pretty recently. But that's all we've really got going on in the dungeon this week. Nothing too exciting. Spring has finally arrived here in Pennsylvania, and it is beautiful outside. And it mostly just means I'm looking out the window at the sun while I'm folding pamphlets over and over again. So let's dive into the games. So last week we talked about Flip Town, a Western flip and write game, and this week we're going to talk about a Western game as well called Bantam West, but I have a little extra bonus review in here as well because I had a chance to play Gun Cowboy, a journaling game of Dead Outlaws this week, and I figured it fit right in, so why not do both of them? So Bantam West was a big box Western board game that... Uh, Funded on Kickstarter back in 2021, I believe. Uh, It was supposed to come out in 2022, but it was a little later. Um, If I recall correctly, it's been a while. Bantam West is an immersive tabletop sim adventure board game for one to four players. You begin life anew as one of four deadly strangers who all just arrived in the outlaw town of Gallows Springs. You work, fight, build, and burn to become the most notorious. It's listed as being for 14 and up, 1 to 4 players, and takes 1 to 3 hours, according to their stats on here, and has a number of game modes that you can play in. Uh, This is from Bantam Planet, who are primarily Ike Brunicardi and Max Palmer, and to my knowledge, they did... Most of the game, I couldn't find any credits in the instruction books as to who did the art and graphic design and whatnot. I don't know if that implies that they did all of the above or not, but if so, they took a very large project on with this because this is a fairly packed game box. So there's a lot of ground to cover in this box. It's fairly full. It has a lot of little details, and they really did do what they could to try and capture the open-world vibe of a game like uh, Red Dead Redemption or something like that. Um, whether they succeeded or not is another matter. Uh, for this, For this particular podcast. I'm not going to cover rules and how they work and uh, really even step by step on how to play this game because uh, for one thing it's huge and there's just 
more ground than I can competently cover. And for another, that's just sort of not what my focus is here on the podcast. However, there are a couple of great uh, how to play videos and stuff that came out around the same time as their Kickstarter that you can go check out if you want to know a little more about the game. I, one thing that I do appreciate that they did is the they took the path that a few other larger box games have done recently where you sort of gradually get introduced to the rules as you play a couple of different games of it. I really appreciate that. Um, you start out with a fairly simple, straightforward adventure, and then the next time you play the game, it introduces a few new mechanics and that kind of thing. And it, it has a very video game tutorial in that respect as well. However, I do wish when games would include this type of tutorial that they would make the tutorial either solo focused or solo friendly because let's be realistic most of the time if somebody gets this game they don't want to bring it to the table with their game group and play the starter scenario to learn how to play the game they want to sit down and play it a couple of times before their group comes over so that they know how to play and then they can teach it with a maybe maybe not full version of the game but something that's a little more there than just the initial tutorial on this so it it works and I did play it solo with the introductory tutorial stuff and the initial game rule introductions but you have to play multi-hand and it just I feel like that aspect of it it felt like it was more fiddly to learn than it would have had they made the tutorial so solo focused so that you didn't have to learn how to play multiple characters or juggle things while you're also learning the game. So it's an admirable effort to introduce a game with as many different modes and rules and instructions and things as this does, but it sort of falls down in terms of actual execution and how you play. Uh, So looking at the game itself, without getting into the gameplay, it's gorgeous. It's got really nice art. It's got this cool vibe. It takes place in this fictional western town called Gallo Springs. And you play one of four characters who all have a little bit of a different personality to them. You can play as Levi Mercer, Mika Mankiller, Jericho Jones, and Hannah Wilde. And all of them have different things that they focus and specialize in. You can be a thief, an arsonist, a merchant, or a gunslinger. I did feel like each of them had a little bit of a different personality to them as I was playing with them. As you get further into the components, there's a lot of really gorgeous stuff in this game. I got the, uh, I got the Shadow Governor's Pledge, which was the sort of the upgraded Kickstarter backer one. And it has like, really nice coins and the miniatures are cool and there's little miniatures for the different cabins that you can do and that kind of thing and everything's really nice quality wise like all of the cards have a really good feel to them they all have a nice light linen finish to them that is actually a little more subtle than some of the other games which i really like it's It cuts down on the glare, but it's not quite as textured feeling as some of the others are. Uh, My biggest complaint from an aesthetic and functional standpoint with this game is that their fonts on 80% of their cards are minuscule. Like, they are unreadably tiny. Uh, There's there's font on here that's like... You know the the little the little letter they put under the date on a penny to tell you where it was minted. I think some of the font on this is smaller than that. So as an as an elder generational game player, I really struggled at times with how small the font is on this, particularly when you're talking about like some of the to-do lists and things that you can look at. 
that you kind of have to reference pretty regularly to actually play the game functionally. Like the, the Hunter's Expedition is one of the adventure games that you can play, and the font on the bottom of this for the different things like permadeath and the hunting lodges functionality are unreadably small even without my glasses and squinting they have two separate field manuals uh, that teach you how to play the game and i feel like there are a few more of these that really could have benefited from being in the book format in a larger font and just a little easier to reference as you're playing the game. Uh, beyond that, most of the components of the game are fantastic. They're, they feel great. They're really fun to use. They have a little bit of a Western clicky vibe to them with the coins and everything. But I do think that the aesthetics were favored over functionality and unfortunately that's one of the places that this type of game that's already a little fiddly can really get punched in the gut when that happens. Uh, like there's a grit that you use which is either a little coffee icon or a tobacco icon depending on which side you have it and they get moved around pretty regularly over the course of your turn but they're teeny they're fiddly and they don't really have like a place to put them and so they became something that I just mostly ignored and used some coins from a different game for I actually ended up using poker chips because I thought that was thematic and I just ran into a few problems like that, that it feels like it was something that was play tested with different components. And then when it came to making the game, things were either changed or modified for aesthetic reasons and not necessarily gameplay reasons. So to be straightforward with this, I really like this game's ambition. I like the world it created. And there are aspects of this that I genuinely enjoy. I love the event cards that it has. There's a whole pile of just really unique different things that you can run up against. And you can make choices on how to deal with them that I really appreciate. It adds to that open world aspect to it. But overall the game fell pretty flat for me particularly as a solo experience. And I, I believe that's something that the creators have actually addressed since publishing it, um, admitting that they had never really planned for it to be a solo game. It was a mode that they sort of tacked on due to popular demand from Kickstarter. A large portion of the enjoyment with this game comes from sort of the antagonistic notorious outlaw aspect of playing with more players in the game and I think that that is a very specific complaint for me as well the solo mode as it sits is sort of just a beat your own score hunting expedition and it's pretty half-baked I played it once and have no intention of really ever playing it again. I also did play the standard game multi-handed, which is fine. I've certainly played a number of board games multi-handed, and there's always a lot of fiddly upkeep when you do that kind of thing, even when they are designed to be multi-hand played for solo, and this one was not, so there's a lot of little ticky nitpicky stuff that you have to worry about. And playing multi-hand was fine, but it didn't work for me personally. And part of it is that a lot of the design intent of this game, like if you look at it from a Red Dead Redemption 2 standpoint, there's a lot of like, oh, I'm playing Red Dead Online and I'm griefing other cowboys and I'm breaking into their cabins and stealing their shit and playing the outlaw. And I, I personally don't play that way when I'm playing those type of games. So that part of the game, especially when playing multi-handed solo, is a letdown because you, it's, there's just no real reason to 
interact in that respect. I'm not going to go running around raising people's cabins to the ground without that aspect of the game. And there's a surprising amount of focus on burning and destroying other people's cabins and causing a ruckus in town. And they weren't necessarily shy about that on the surface, but at the same time, like, your character's sort of walking a fine line of notoriousness where you're not robbing stagecoaches or anything like that necessarily. You're still, like, helping out the townsfolk, but you're also burning some cabins down. <laughs> I don't know. I, I've got to be honest, like... This game really worked for me in enough aspects that I will probably hold on to it, but fell flat in enough other aspects that I haven't decided if I'm holding on to it because I want to play it with more people and see how it plays, or if I just like the vibe and some of the things they've done in it enough that I want to hold on to it for when I'm working on one of my Western games. <laughs> Which is not necessarily the worst reason to hold on to a game, but it's also not the best reason either. I do really appreciate what they did with it, and I think it would play better, particularly if you have a game group with uh, other players that really do like that antagonistic take that aspect of gameplay, I think that's what this game really would be geared towards. It's kind of an odd beast because it's got a little bit of a sluggish pace at times, and then you'll hit like an event or something will happen as you're moving around the sort of small maps uh, that like things get a little more exciting, but uh, it never feels as open and expansive as I'd hoped it would, I guess is how I would put it. There are a number of different maps that you can put out depending on the scenario you're playing, and there's like the highlands and the mountains and a few other things like that, and each one has different aspects to it, like there's some weather events and uh, different types of enemies and encounters that you can run up against. But they never felt as exciting to me as I'd hoped it would. Like, I, a, a solid open world game has you wondering what's going to happen with every turn. Whereas with this one, there's a little more of like a strategy in where you're moving. And maybe you'll get lucky and hit something really cool. I I don't know. It's it, It's an odd beast that... I feel like at times needs to be bigger and more complex, and at other times needs to be streamlined down to a, what might be a completely different game. So I know this is a little bit of an unusual review for this one. Normally I have a lot more of a solidified opinion about a game when I'm playing it, and this is not from lack of playing. I played seven games of this and put a pretty fair number of hours into roaming around Bantam West, and I played all four of the characters at different times, and it's just sort of one of those things that's sort of... <laughs> it's weird, my opinions sort of just stayed ethereal still, where I just don't know how I feel about this game. I think it really does hit a few things very, very well. And if you're a big Western fan in particular, uh, it does a few things that Western Legends doesn't do, and vice versa. I, I would not get this if you like Western Legends but want a solo option for a Western board game, because this ain't it. It's not hitting the, the, the mark on a lot of different levels for me for that. I prefer Western Legends. They do two totally different things for me, however, but I would probably be more likely to pull out Western Legends than Bantam West if I've got a group over that wants to play a Western board game. So I would say that if you like Red Dead Redemption 2 and you like a little more of like the antagonistic group outlaw type actions, this game's definitely worth looking into. Uh, but do know that you're going into it with a fairly heavy, I think there's five or six introductory 
missions before you really hit your stride with the open world gameplay. And that's something that you want to keep in mind for a game like this. Uh, Like I said, the components are top-notch, they look really great, and it is available currently on the Bantam Planet website. And you can get the Shadow Governor's Pledge, which is the the deluxe version of it that I got for like 160 which is, if I remember right, only maybe 10, 15 bucks more than the original uh, Kickstarter pledge was. You can also get the base game for $100. The main thing that it doesn't include is the Shadow Governor's Pledge has uh, the metal coins, the <laughs> the silly little Marshall's badge for the one player thing, and then the act terrain for your cabins. Which, uh, I really, really like the coins, but I don't think the other stuff is worthwhile. So, uh, personally, I probably would have stuck with the the base game and just done like an add-on for the coins. But I'm also a total sucker for metal coins anyway, so I probably would have snagged those either way. I've already pulled them out of the box to just keep in my assorted coin pile so that I can use them with other games as well. So I really do sort of land on the fence post with this game. It's a game that was made with passion and real enthusiasm for the theme, but I just feel like it landed poorly for solo play in particular. Now we come to a game that is Essentially the complete opposite end of the spectrum from from Bantam West, Gun Cowboy from Shea. So I picked up Gun Cowboy as part of one of those massive solo but not alone game bundles on itch. And as soon as I saw it the other day, I was like, oh, this would be a nice fit for my my Western series here, so to speak. <laughs> <laughs> so Gun Cowboy is a journaling game for one player about a dead outlaw at the end of a long career. They may not know that they're dead, but they are. Once they had a gang, a posse, a crew, and that's gone now, and only they and their gun remain. They will burn themselves up until they're nothing but bones and dust. So Gun Cowboy is a journaling game that uses a deck of cards for tarot-like predictions and a coin flip for resolutions of different stat tests. It's very straightforward and simple. Uh, The actual how to play is maybe a sheet worth of text. And then there's a few pages of resolution and oracle charts. Uh, I printed it out in like booklet form and and I used my my saddle stitch stapler for the first time on it because I thought it'd be funny to try out my saddle stitch stapler on a gun cowboy game. Uh, And it's very simple, it's straightforward, it's elegantly designed in that respect and super melancholy. Uh, You have a couple of stats you use. You can use good, quick, or ugly to resolve different situations that are revealed with the card draw. And you can also use gun at any given time. And when you use gun, it immediately succeeds, but it's never a great choice if you can avoid it. Because eventually all that's left is violence, killing, and death. So I had a really interesting time playing Gun Cowboy. I played it... Uh, Three different times. Uh, One of the times I was sort of just in my average, oh, let's play a game before bed mode. One of the times I was in a very silly spaghetti western mood. And another time I was feeling pretty melancholy and down. And the play experience during this is pretty radically different. My prompts and everything are crazy different depending on what my mood is for it. Uh, One of the things I really appreciate about this particular one is as you're playing your stats modify, you start at three with your three main stats and zero at gun, and as you use one of any of those, the other ones all lower until you hit a point where you're all gun or you're all focused on one particular stat. And it sort of shows your focus on that character and how they've chosen to spend their last of their life. And it's it's 
both thematic but also more intentional than a lot of other journaling games that I've played are, which I think is really cool. I like that you make that choice, but then you flip a coin to see if you succeed. And depending on how many points you have in that stat, you have that many tries to succeed. Regardless of whether you succeed or not, that stat is adjusted up and everything else is adjusted down except gun. And gun just continues to lower all of the other stats if you use it. I love this simple mechanic. It's slick. It's efficient. It makes sense right away. It does actually become a little bit of an emotional choice depending on what the different circumstances you find yourself in are and it also puts a pretty finite length on the game it's not one of those that I feel like oh I'm gonna play gun cowboy every night for a month or something like that it is a single sitting and it's a really reasonable length for a journaling game depending on how loquacious you get with your journaling entries. Uh, as you play the game, you travel between locations as a wandering vagabond, with each journal entry representing one stop along your road to Boot Hill. It's pretty cool. You, you lay out three cards, and each one represents a different aspect of your life at that moment. There's what happened in that location before you got there, what's happening now, and... And the third card is the dilemma. This is what you're up against and what the people at that location are up against at that exact moment. And that's sort of the choice you have to make is how you will use your skills to remedy, exacerbate, or quash this problem that the people are experiencing. And it's a fairly straightforward list of prompts. Uh, every once in a while I did hit something that I struggled with a little bit, and if I did I just drew a different card that fit better, or I just worked through it in the story itself. Uh, but there's some really interesting things you can come across here. The devil shows up multiple times at crossroads and holding wine or shovels. You can bump into triumphs of science and modern engineering and steam trains and blood baths and standoffs. And they're all beautifully written for being just like a single sentence or two. It's it's wonderful. Like, if you pull the ace of spades, you get the jammed gun. Someone sits with their back against a tree, a revolver laid across their lap. It is only when you get close that you notice details. The decayed skin peeling away, flashes of yellowed bone. Like, that's elegant. It's very western. It's beautifully written. I love Che's uh, style with this. And everyone is like that. Like, we've got... Uh, the reservation is the Eight of Hearts, and this is the only place they're allowed to live thanks to divisions they had no say in and treaties they did not sign. They survived despite the odds. And it's the way these different aspects interact with each other as you play the game that really tells a cool story as you play. I ran into the devil and got hurt by him, and then I tried to help out some miners and ended up failing at that and escaped on a train and wound up in a wilderness that was under attack in the middle of a war. And I just think it's a really cool way of looking at end-of-life outlaw stuff that draws both emotionally and like hits that pleasure center of my brain in a way that I'd not expected such a simple game. It's definitely a testament to why I've fallen in love with the solo journaling RPG genre in general. But in particular, I really appreciate Gun Cowboy's brevity. I like that you you start out dead, you just might not be dead yet. And when you start to play the game, you know you're only going to last so long because your stats, your attributes are constantly in flux, but they're never really on a definitive rise you're eventually going to run out and end up with one of the resolutions which are sort of lyrical end of life options depending on what your gun stat is at the end 
So like if you've got a one to two, nothing much. If your final score is one or two, you come to nothing remarkable in the end. You blend into the ocean of migrants in the West and vanish into the screaming maelstrom of the modern world, or die one day in the desert and are forgotten, absolutely. Tell the story of ending alone. Like, ah, oh, it's elegantly written. I love this tiny little, like, I mean, it's, it's quite a few pages the way I printed it because I'm an idiot and don't know how to work my new printer, but it's only a couple of pages you can pick it up over on itch for like i think it was 11 bucks or something like that um, but there's also quite a few copies available that are community copies and i've seen it in a couple of bundles now as well and i totally recommend picking it up i think it's a very fantastic little fun journaling game it's one of the better western themed journaling games that i've played and you should play it with your oldest deck of poker cards you have. Uh, as always, I'll throw some links below for Gun Cowboy, and you can go check it out, or you can look it up over on Itch. Uh, I think if you just type in Gun Cowboy on, like, Google or whatnot, it'll bring it up pretty well, especially if you add Che, C-H-E, into the search field, too. Yeah, Gun Cowboy was a pleasant surprise for me, particularly after... I don't want to call it a slog because I did enjoy my time in Bantam West, but compared to it, uh, Gun Cowboy was both melancholy and brief in a way that I really appreciated. Uh, one of the times I played it, it was immediately after finishing a session of Bantam West, and the difference between the two was pretty striking. Uh, Gun Cowboy and Flip Town are both games that I would absolutely just keep in my western game rotation for the foreseeable future and i really recommend you picking both of them up and i guess that's about it for this particular episode of die alone i have no idea what the next episode will be maybe it's one i've recorded already maybe it's something i'll play between here and now uh if you haven't noticed, I didn't. I don't think I mentioned in my last episode that I am shooting for a bi-weekly schedule on these. There's just no way I have time to play these games with any real capacity and put out a weekly podcast, but I am going to try for one every two weeks. It may end up being closer to every three weeks, but we'll see. If you've designed a solo game and would like me to play it for the show reach out to me. Uh, you can send me an email at deeplydapper at gmail.com or you can follow links on the website. I'd, particularly if you're an indie creator and you'd like to get some more ears on your game you've created for solo players, uh, give me a holler. I'd love to give it a go and play it for the show. I did not mean for that to rhyme. Uh, <laughs> As always, thank you so much to my patrons. I don't do anything on my Patreon page, but those that do support me through it do genuinely make a difference in me being able to create stuff like the podcasts and things that that are outside the range of what I would call my normal job as an RPG creator. I also have a few games coming up. I'll throw the links to uh, the second edition of 3 Dice 6 that's coming up, so you can follow along on Kickstarter there. Or you can hop on to Toon Punk. I'll throw the late pledge link to that below as well. But as always, thank you so much for listening. If you'd like to discuss these games or any solo games, I do have a Facebook group for Die Alone that I'm going to try and be more active in. Um, I took a break from social media for a large part aside from like the family obligations but i'm gonna try and be more active in my particular facebook group for die alone now that the podcast is back and running so definitely go check it out uh as always thank you so much for listening and remember we all die alone